Now, let's do an example where that comes in handy. This is a show that problem, and you'll probably encounter one on the first exam, where you're given some equation, you have to show that the equation is true or derive it from something or other. So show that for an ideal gas, this equation is true. And we're going to use a Maxwell relation in the solution to this problem. And this is problem 430 of Ball. Let's start. Let's start by writing down that equation. So here's the equation we want to show is correct. Cp minus how u changes with temperature at constant pressure minus how h changes with pressure at constant entropy and then how p changes with temperature at constant volume. We want to show that is equal to zero. Remember that uh, Cp, we'll change that, is, is how H changes with temperature at constant pressure. That's our definition of Cp. Let's put that in there. So now our equation is how H changes with temperature at constant pressure minus how U changes with temperature at constant pressure minus how H changes with pressure at constant entropy times how pressure changes with temperature at constant volume, that's equal to zero. And here we have an H, and here we have a U, and we know a relationship between H and U. In fact, we know that H is defined as U plus PV, so that how H changes with temperature at constant pressure is how U changes with uh, temperature, oh, forgot this constant pressure with respect to temperature times constant pressure plus how we use this PV changes with temperature at constant pressure. So we just took the derivative of this equation with respect to temperature at constant pressure. Let's now plug that in there. So we'll substitute this term for that and we end up with how U changes with temperature at constant pressure plus how PV changes with temperature at constant pressure. And then we'll write the rest of that equation. So we substitute in there, and here's the rest of that. I'll look at what's going to happen. How U changes with temperature at constant pressure. Oh, that's kind of cool. It's going to cancel out there. Minus how H changes with pressure at constant entropy and how P changes with T at constant volume. We all show that is equal to zero. All right, so we're on our way. We got, we got two things to get rid of. Or we got, we got rid of two things. So I'll we'll just rewrite this equation. How PV changes with temperature at constant pressure minus how H changes with pressure at constant entropy. How P changes with T at constant volume is equal to zero. Aha! Uh -huh. This looks like we can substitute something in here. Let's see how H changes the pressure at constant entropy. Well, what do you think that is? Probably related to something to volume because that's what's associated with P. But let's go up here and let's see if we can figure that out. How H changes with pressure at constant entropy is indeed volume. So that's volume. So we now rewrite this as how PV changes the temperature constant pressure minus V, how pressure changes with temperature, at constant volume, that's equal to zero. And let's rewrite this uh, in anticipation of where we're going, how PV changes with temperature at constant pressure minus how, see V is a constant, so you can pull that into the derivative, how PV changes with temperature at constant volume equal to zero. So I think this term is equal to that term, and therefore when you subtract the two, you get zero. But just let's show that explicitly. So now we have an ideal gas. So we know that PV is equal to nRT. So dPV is equal to dnRT. So if we go back, we can just substitute in for PV nRT. So this is how nRT changes with T at constant pressure minus how, again, we're substituting in for PV. I'm just going to put PV in there. Minus how 
NRT, change of the T at constant volume. Does that equal to zero? Well, let's see, N and R are constant. The derivative of T respect to T is just one, and it doesn't matter whether there's P, so this is just equal to NR. Same way here, the derivative respect to T and NR constant, you pull that off, the derivative of T respect to T is one, it doesn't matter if it's constant volume, NR is zero, so therefore we had Q E D, whatever that means, that's what the mathematicians use when they've shown something. So that's an example. Actually, we did not use a Maxwell relation to solve this. The key realization here was from the previous lecture that how H changes with P a constant S is just volume. And so that's it for Maxwell relations. They're handy. You might keep in mind what these are. Again, you don't have to memorize these, although they're kind of easy to derive. You don't have to memorize these because the exams are open book and open notes and any notes you have on your computer and so on, so you just have to know how to reference it. That's it for Maxwell relations.